I'm going to do transfer with the gel first on fabric. Now, there's, there's a couple of things that we have to talk about before we can actually do this. One is, and the most critical, is the kind of ink it is. It has to be done on a colored photocopier, not a colored laser, not an inkjet. Okay? It has to be color photocopier. Now, it's difficult to know if it's right, but if you take your orange oil with you to Staples or wherever you're going, because you can't trust those kids, they don't know no. what they're talking about. <laughs> this is Lori found out. Get a little bit of orange oil on your out. finger and rub it on the ink. And if I can smear the ink, see it's black there. It's smearing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Take a look. Because if it's doing that, you've got the right kind of coffee. If it doesn't touch it, so I'm going to try another machine. Okay. Everybody get that? Okay. That's the way to do it. You can't do it. You can't do that test with the gel as easily. So take your orange oil with you. You need the same kind of coffee whether you're using the gel or the oil. Okay, so if you finally get one that's right, put a big red X on it. So that's the machine I want you to use. Alright? Okay. The other thing, probably pretty obvious, is that if you if you've got any kind of text on your image, it needs to be printed in mirror image mode. And all the copiers have that function available for you. Okay? Now, getting technical, it's better if you take an image you've sourced online, say graphicsfairy.com, into them on a, on a stick rather than an inkjet copy that you print at home and then take there to get copied properly. And that's because copies of copies degrade. The more you do that, the worse the image becomes. So start with a really the largest image you can find, and on the Graphics Ferry site it says printable PDF, full size printable PDF. That's the image you want, not the little thumbnail that she's showing you as a preview. You have to click. It's always a link that you click on, okay? Because if they put those full size images on the web page, it would take half an hour for that page to download. So they don't. It's a, it's a file that you have to click on to access. Right click save as or right click print. Preferably save as and you've got your flash drive stuck in the USB drive and you just send it there. Okay. Got it. Okay. Now, with the gel method, what we do is we apply the gel to whatever surface it is you want the ink to be transferred to. And because there's a lot, what we have to do is let that dry then and then rub off the paper. So it could be an issue how much paper you have that you're going to, that you don't need. So you could trim a bit so that you're not rubbing for forever and a day, right? Of your party will be anyway. <laughs> the other thing to think about is here I am trimming this because it's round. But on the cushion, I've done them square. No matter, I didn't follow the contour of the shape. Because you can see that if I did, it would look kind of weird, right? So I always put the gel on in the rectangle because I like things neat and orderly. But occasionally you could do a clock face or something round and just cut a nice round circle, keeping in mind that that will show. You'll, you'll have that gel edge. Okay? So trim them accordingly. Now, on fabric, I'm going to make the gel pretty much half this bigger than the image itself. And then when it's all done, I'll trim it. Okay, so I'll cut some of that ragged gel edge off, which leaves me a, an edge that won't fray because the gel sealed the fibers. On wood though, if you trim the paper too closely to your image, you're gonna have that edge of gel 
on your on your wood, right? Which feel you can feel it. It's a raised surface. It's the thickness of the gel, whatever you put it on. Not so good. It feels almost like you decoupaged it. So what I do is I cut it just half an inch bigger, at least, than the image. So that my edge, when I'm all done, will be half an inch away from ink. Okay? Following me so far? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, when it's totally dry, I can actually feather the edge of that gel so you cannot tell. You run your hand over and it's smooth. I got a table in the shop with a tray later. Like, you can't tell that it was the image transfer with gel. Okay? Is that because you're dipping your brush into the gel and you're putting more gel on to feather it? Uh, no, I'm, I'm putting the gel on as thickly as I need to, but bigger than it needs to be. Bigger than the image. But when so you say, that, sorry, but when you say yeah. feather, is it sanding? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh. Sand. But you got to wait 24 hours because before that it's too soft. It's like plastic and it just chews. Mm. If you wait tw 24 hours, it's hard enough that you can actually feather the edge of the gel okay. so that you cannot feel it. Okay? It goes right on the surface. It goes right on the surface. You probably, if you research this, this uh, image transfer stuff at all, you see a million ways to do it. One of them being painting the actual image with a layer this way, a layer that way, and a third layer, and then let it dry, and then rub the paper off, and now you've got a skin of um, plastic with the image in it that you stick on something. It's three layers of gel. I mean, it's bad enough one layer of gel is raised, right? So it's not a method I like to use. So let me show you how I'm going to do this. First of all, I've got a damp brush, not wet, but damp, okay? And then I'm going to turn my image upside down and mark where I need. I'm going to go all the way to the edge of the fabric, bigger than this. But mark it because as soon as you take that off, it always seems like it should be smaller than it is. You need to mark it so that you get enough of the gel on there. And then go ahead and spread this gel on. So I'm leaving a definite layer of gel on the surface. It's thick. And at the same time, it's filling in all the little lumps and bumps in the fabric or the wood and creating ultimately a nice smooth surface which allows the image to transfer beautifully like every mark. Does it matter what um, kind of gel medium? Soft or? Soft is easier to spread but essentially you can add water to a regular or hard too so but the soft is ready to go. Now the other thing you need to do is make sure you don't have huge brush marks. Like use a decent brush. Don't use one of those chip brushes with coarse fibers that leaves lines in the brush marks. And what ha if you magnify it, it would be like this, the surface. And the image wants to sit just on the top. Mm. So smooth out. And to do that, you keep your brush really low and do a final few passes. If I do this, I'm going to dig it and take it off as fast as I'm putting it on. Okay? It's nice and smooth like that. Now I've got a little extra time working on fabric because the fabric gets wet, stays wet a while. If I was doing it that slowly on wood, I'd be in trouble because it's drying fast. If it starts to dry at all, it goes kind of down around the edges, it will not transfer. Then if it's important, make sure it's right way up. And then set it down and quickly go around with your finger. See on the edge right away. And then you want to take a piece of dry paper towel, which is rare around here, and then burnish. You have to be fast because the wetness, the water, moisture in the gel is going to wrinkle the paper. And it gets really scary if you've got a big image. It takes two people to do something this size. I'm serious. Because you've got to get that smoothed out in seconds after you hit it with, hit with gel. And once you've got it rubbed down, uh -oh.
try not to get any gel like I just did on the back. It will make it really hard to get the paper off. So I'll be scrubbing there. And then we just have to let it dry. But before then, I'm just going to carefully wipe off. And it doesn't have to come off, but get rid of the lumps and bumps of gel, whether this be on wood or fabric, so that it's not too lumpy bumpy. Okay? Now, if you've got enough gel on there, it moistens the paper and makes the image start to peek through. So take a look and see how much is on there. The other thing to think about is this stuff is toxic. <laughs> Only in California. It's <laughs> so it, it's carcinogenic, okay? So be aware of that. Whereas the orange oil, you got at least two weeks. <laughs> no, it's much better. The orange oil is much better. It comes with its own problem. It's like being flammable at 40 degrees centigrade. So no smoking cigars while you're doing your own oil. You're going to go off in a ball of flames. It's pretty scary. Okay, so I've done that one, and it's just a matter of letting it dry.